Yo, what's up, guys? It's Grady Jared. Welcome to my podcast, Getting Real with Grady Jared, where me and my co-host, Kelsey Conway, talk about football, life, everything in between. This week, we got a very, very special guest, someone who's near and dear to my heart, someone who's, you know, always around, being seen, you know, with me here and there. Um, a lady that's very, very special to me was my mother, Alicia Jarrett. And uh, I'm super, super excited about this conversation, obviously, so you can get another inside look at me and her relationship, and you can learn a little bit about the woman that raised me and uh, to the man I am today. So here's our conversation with Alicia Jarrett. Well, Grady, when we first decided to do a podcast together, I think the guest I was most excited to have on is the guest that's joining us today. And that is the one and only Alicia Jarrett, your wonderful mom, who is just awesome in every way. And I can't wait to hear about your childhood stories together, how you've uh -oh. developed your bond. But wow, we have Alicia Jarrett on the show today. How exciting, right? Yeah, super exciting, super exciting. A little nervous. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no telling what's about to go down. But no, I'm super excited. This is an honor. This is a dream come true. And I'm happy to have um my mom alicia jarrett the mama jarrett on a podcast and um ready to get to it you know let the fans let everybody know a little bit about you know our relationship and um you know what she has meant to me in my career and to other to other people as well um not just myself you know being a mother to mm -hmm. others being that figure for um other guys even going all the way back to high school and park ball. So, um, so I'm excited to let the world know and share, um, share a little bit what I get to experience every day of my life. Yeah. And for those who don't know, and they'll, they'll get into the story of just how close they are, but it's rare if you know Grady that you don't know his mom. Um, she is so involved in every aspect of his life. So Alicia, let's just start with Let's go down memory lane a little bit here. What stood out about Grady as a kid? Ooh, um, <clears throat> what stood out about Grady as a kid? Well, uh, Kelsey, first, uh, thank you all for having me on the show. I am uh, super excited to be here, and I am super proud of, uh, of uh, the both of you for getting this uh, up and going. I think it's going to be an amazing opportunity for people to to learn a lot about, you know, different, different hosts that you'll uh, have on your show. So congratulations uh, on the show. Um, uh, Grady, and I call him Jarrett. <laughs> it's still very Yeah, hard. why? <laughs> I, I just, I've, I've uh, started off calling him Jarrett all of his life and all of his life, I've just called him by his last name, Jarrett. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, he was a, he's a, was a very docile kid. He was very um, humble very quiet, um, but very ambitious. He's always been a competitor. Um, and uh, he's always been very resilient. But with that resiliency, he's also been very empathetic at the same time. And it's, it's rare that you find somebody so competitive at a young age and still very uh, empathetic. And uh, that's, that's, that's that's definitely Jared. Maybe Jared. Humble. He's give, a humble maybe, person. Give, give him a little example of maybe what you mean by- So uh, yeah, I can give an example. I know, I, so, I know exactly. I know what you're about to do. <laughs> so, so, uh, just so people so, can understand what you're so, saying. So he wants me to give an example. I can give you a couple, okay? <laughs> so you, we'll, we'll start off at the at the parks early early on. Um, I think it was his, his, maybe his second year playing um, uh, Warner Roberts football and he uh he was a big guy so he would they called him truck and they called him truck for a reason uh because he would truck down the players I mean he was just he put them on the ground and but then he turned around and he he'd look and then he'd go back and he'd pick them up and you know coach was like okay your job is to put them on the ground you don't have to pick them up but he did that and he did that often you know, he wanted to make sure that he was doing his job, but that he was also not hurting, you know, really hurting somebody too. So, um, yeah. but another example uh, of his competitive competitiveness, he um, he's he's broken one of my TVs. He's since replaced them, but uh, all he, right. <laughs> <laughs> See, I knew that I knew that first story was coming. I ain't know you about to put put my, put my other little business out. <laughs> He was uh, he was playing the the uh, I think it was the Nintendo game back then and and uh, the game was 
beating no, him. No, no, this is not what happened. <laughs> what was it? Jerry's beating you? Uh, I was actually playing the midtime. She mentioned me playing a video game. I was playing with my cousin, and um, we were playing um, uh, what was the the baseball game when you when you uh, you could hit him at the park. It was a real dramatic baseball game, and uh, so he I was pitch, he was pitching me the ball, and I kept hitting home runs, bam, bam, home runs. And then so he so so me to stop hitting home runs, you can make the batter the pitcher hit you with the ball on the thing so you can just walk. And so he so he'd slowing down my points. So he just would hit me with the ball, make my guy walk. I said, man, stop, stop making, stop doing that. Like I want to come on now, stop being scared. So he did it again. I said, I was like, I was like, I don't don't do it again. Like, please don't do it again. Then so <laughs> he did it again. I was like, man, stop. And I threw it through the control and I was like, <gasps> And then all of a sudden, so like we was waiting. So I'm nervous, you know, as my parents get home because both my parents are gone. And then my little sister at the time, now when she was younger, she was, oh my God, she couldn't wait to chill on somebody. So she, as soon as they got, as soon as um they got in the house, Ma, Ma, Jerry bought the TV. And then from there, that's all, all she wrote. You know. we, we was disciplined kids, so I had to be handled with, so. Um, yeah, that, I, I feel like I was probably my brother would probably say the same thing about me I'm the youngest of three and there's mm -hmm. definitely sometimes I ratted him out and now I look back <laughs> and I'm like why did I do that <laughs> <laughs> yep. uh, she's not there yet she, she's not why she why did she do that <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so when you look at you mentioned the traits of what Grady was like as a kid. When did his football career really start? And when did you know, okay, my son is not just, you know, a high school football player. He actually, you know, could have, could have a career doing this. Yeah, sure. So, uh, Jared played multiple sports. He, uh, of course, football, uh, he played baseball where he excelled. Uh, he played basketball. Um, you know, he ran track or did the shot put in track and, and he wrestled right again on. where he excelled. Uh, and where I knew in football, he would, um, I really thought that he would have a, a definitely a college career and possibly a, a professional career in baseball because huh? he was really, really good in baseball. Huh. Um, <clears throat> but it was probably uh, going into his ninth grade year for football he played both sides of the ball and you know I, I'm I, uh, anybody that knows me knows I'm a mama bear and so I was like you know they need to get somebody else out there because my boy playing both sides of the ball you know whatever <laughs> whatever and and but you, as you as you as you learn the game and 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 I've, I'm you know very blessed I've been around it for a long time um you know that that's a that's a positive right and so probably, um, you know, he had this motor that just kept going and kept going and kept going and kept going. And that motor then turned into drive, right? He, he wanted to do things better and better and better each and every time. And he, he, he loved to be challenged um the high school had had a coach that had been there for years and years and then when Jared went into the ninth grade the coach changed well this particular coach didn't believe in uh freshmen being on the varsity team right and so Jared and I kind of discussed it and I said well you know we're not gonna argue with his rules you just have to do better than the people that's on the varsity team <laughs> and and he did you know we we had a meeting the coach said listen I don't want no no mama daddy grandmama grandpapa coming up to me telling me to put the freshman kid on my varsity team it's not happening I would happen to be the uh, president of our booster club at the time and I was you know no, not gonna argue with coach right but I watched him at practice every day and I knew that eventually he was going to be on that varsity team and it was about the third game in, maybe the fourth game in his freshman year that he started on the varsity team and he's never, he went straight, you know, through. Um, but his, his motor and his drive, his, his inner uh, competitive spirit led me to believe that definitely he was going to be playing on the collegiate level and that he was going to be very competitive 
and his drive would definitely get him to the next level. Have you two always been as close as you are now? Um, yeah, I would definitely say so. Um, um, it's, 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 I mean, you know, uh, I don't even, you know, well, like I got to always tell everybody, like, as far on the football side of things, um, you know, I'll never remember a game, you know, my mom not being there or involved or, mm-hmm. um, you know, or, you know, more than a game, a, a, a piece of classwork or whatever it is, just super, super involved. And, um, you know, she motivated me because I seen like how hard she worked uh, for us growing up. And it's just something that I, you know, I took pride in and, and also was, you know, fortunate enough for her, you know, not to have, you um, baby me or like you know spoon fed me mm-hmm. like because it's like some of the a lot of the things and lessons that i've learned and, and things persevere and overcome was really just um you know basically like versus if, if say something don't go my way versus you know pat me back telling me it's okay she's like you got to figure that out you know what i'm saying like you got to mm-hmm. go work like the world not gonna feel sorry for you and that's one of my biggest things that i that i just you know i try to teach people whether it's in personal relationships and uh, friendships, talking to kids or whatever, you know, everything is so, you know, you know, feel good. It's okay. It's okay. It's going to be tried the next time, but versus looking yourself in the mirror and in fact, figuring out what you got to do better to be better. And, um, and, 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 and I just think that's, that's something that was just instilled with me by my mom. But like, I mean, we can go, whether it's, you know, through the college recruiting, um, you know, we hit the road going to camps, um, Mm -hmm. trying to, um, you know, get more attention or scholarships or whatever, but she'll tell you like, like, you know, um, when we was coming, like coming, you know, it's easy to look now where we be at in, 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 on, as a, as a professional and, uh, see the same people that, you know, didn't believe in you or like look down on you, like really laughs at you, like saying you're wasting your time coming here, pat your back, be on all on you, man. And I tell her, I mean, you know, we don't sit there and talk about, I mean, we, ain't, we, ain't, like I always said, you know, my success is about proving the people that believed in me right, right. You know, it ain't ever been, it's never been about a naysayer or a hater or nothing because at the end of the day, they gonna come back to you and try to show you love anyway. So, um, you know, you just, you just gotta, um, you know, so those are just lessons that I just learned, you know, um, mm-hmm. being with her. But I feel like, you know, we always had a, a close relationship and, you know, it just, you know, just get, um, get, I think get better, right, Mike? Yep, yep, yep. So <laughs> for, <laughs> for sure. Um, I, I, I think, Kelsey, that <clears throat> um, your question is, you know, have we always been this close? Uh, I think anyone that knows my family know how uh, the bond between my son and I, mm-hmm. um, I mean, it's a life, it's a lifetime bond. Uh, the son, the, the bond between a mother and son, I, I think is a special bond. And for us, um, that bond is unchanged by people, time, distance, um, you know, it's the, it's the purest love. And, um, you know, I will and have forever supported him, um, while I'm his largest cheerleader, I'm probably his worst critic, right? Mm-hmm. We, we keep everything really, really real, right? Um, Getting real with <laughs> getting real with Grady Jarrett, absolutely, 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 and uh, uh, it's an understanding of any situation and forgiving of any mistake is our relationship, and that's that's how you can, uh, you know, kind of that's how I would kind of cock it up. Yeah. So I've fortunately been able to get to know you both. Um, having worked for the Falcons for the last couple of years. And something I think that the fans should know about you, Mama Jared, is that you have, you're not just, oh, I I go to the home games, right? You haven't missed up until COVID. I remember you telling me this. You had not missed one of Grady's games. Then that is high school. That is college. That is NFL. That is so you hit the road when he hits the road. Mm-hmm. I've seen you at training camp practice at Flowery Branch at sure. 9 a.m. in the morning. I yeah. mean, you don't miss, you don't miss anything. And like I think it's funny that you know you you talk about how you're his biggest critic kind of reminds me of the movie the blind side when sandra bullock's in the stands and she's like calling the coach and she's like run the dang ball <laughs> because yeah. 
because Dabo told us that um, when he when you were up there for the summer camp where Grady got recruited, mm-hmm. you know, you were coaching him hard in those defensive line drills. And I think the way that you balance that love, but also, you know, keeping it real, I think it really shows in the way that Grady is as a person. And I, I for you as a mom, is that the most rewarding part? Uh, the most rewarding part for me uh, in regards to Jared is the man that he's turned out to be. I mean, he is just such a man of integrity and uh, character means something to him. He's a man that cares, you know, for, for people, you know, even people outside of our family, he's a, he's a giving person. And, you know, when I look and hear stories about Jarrett, I say, that's my son. Right. And, Mm -hmm. and proud is, is not a large enough word, you know, to express the emotion that I feel, you know, when I, when I hear people um, talk about Jared, but uh, he, he's definitely made me proud and, and he's, he has a long way to go, right? I mean, life, I'm hoping that, you know, God blesses him with many, many years. Um, But I, I, I am good to pat myself on the back and say job well done and and continue my prayers that God continues to carry him. I mean, he has morals, values. He knows right from wrong. Uh, I'm a proud, proud mama. For sure. (laughs) I love that. So I wanted to ask you guys a question. Grady, when you get in the NFL, everybody always talks about the biggest goal is to get to that second contract. Uh, When you signed your extension with the Falcons and Mm -hmm. it's with your hometown team, you made it to the second contract set up for the future. What did you guys do to celebrate? And Alicia, if you would expand a little bit on uh, from your perspective, what that moment was like um, for you and Grady to celebrate that together. Um, yeah, so I, I'll pick up on that. Um, you know, that that time was a, um, it was a really, really great time for, you know, me and my family just to be in that position, you know, to, to, to be able to be blessed in that position. And, um, you know, it was a lot of things going on during that time uh, on deciding on whether to, um, you know, in the time it was, you know, it just, you know, being franchise tagged and the way that the mm-hmm. deal worked out. Um, uh, I'll just say this to say, you know, it's, it went all the way down to the wire um, when we were, you know, sign, you know, having our discussions or whatever they may be. But, um, you know, when it, when things got nervous and just, just didn't know how things were going to shake out, you know, we, uh, we put our foot down together and, you know, we let, we let God take care of the rest and he blessed us. But at the same time, uh, you know, I don't think there was much, I I mean, we celebrated, obviously we always celebrate our accomplishment, but we knew it, it was just the beginning. Like, like for, for me, it was a motivation fact, like, like this, like, I mean, this is just, I mean, it's just getting started at that time for me, I had no pro bowls. You know, I know all pros and I feel like the best football is ahead of me. And here I am, you know, two, two seasons later, three going on three years later after my deal, you know, I had a pro bowl every year since I signed my deal and all pro, I think I should have been an all pro again this year, honestly. And uh, I only continue to, I only, you know, pray to continue to get better and uh, work for that. So for me and, and for my mom, we knew that, and we know that, I mean, I just think the things that just can please other people, it's just, it's, it's we really, we we're really hard to please. We are. And we just, I mean, it's like, it's, it's, <laughs> it's just motivating factor to the wheels fall off. It's just more, it's like, you want to be better. You know what I'm saying? You want to um, prove that, you know, that, that, that you never get complacent. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, and that's one of the biggest things, you know, that I've learned in my household growing up, never get complacent. You know, you never arrive. And um, that's why I do continue to get better and, and try to strive and, and get better in every, every, you know, every, every aspect of my life and uh, just continue to grow. So, uh, but as far as, um, 
you know, celebration, celebrating. I think we went out. Mom, what we do? We went out to eat or something. We uh, were tired. We said we were going, but we were tired. <laughs> yeah, we we went back to work. <laughs> you know what yeah, I'm saying? Exactly. <laughs> we went back to work. You know what I'm saying? We back to we went back to work. We handled some stuff in in on in the um personal mm-hmm. life with families getting stuff set mm-hmm. up and about certain things and handling mm-hmm. the business off the field and uh but you know once we you know dotted all the i's checked across all the t's it was work time again you know mm-hmm. and um and i think i just that just goes to show for itself like uh you know it's, it's just uh you know it, it was fun mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so we've talked a lot about what you guys do together in terms of your support alicia in his football career, but that is just such a small part of who Grady is and what he does. Uh, I think we're going to have a whole episode of this podcast dedicated to what Grady does and continues to do in the community in Atlanta, but you are there at everything, not just his sports. He, every community event and everything that's important to him is important to you. So will you guys let us in on a little bit of some of the things that you guys do together that's off the football field? Off the field, um, we're into a lot of things. Definitely, you know, being big in the community, especially where I'm from, out of Carnage, Georgia. Um, um, we first started with uh, doing a football camp and, 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 and um, an anti-bullying campaign, you know, big man don't bully. And that was a big touching um, thing for me because, you know, just showing support for kids and, and, yeah. and so they can treat each other better. It just was a time where it was a lot of, um, um, you know, it was a lot of cyber bullying stuff going on was real popular. I mean, like not popular, but was real um, prevalent on um, social media at the time. And then there were some kids um, around the country, you know, hurting themselves, dealing with bullying. So at the time I was, you know, looking and praying for a cause. That was something that came to me. And we just took that and ran with it. Um, over time, you know, big man don't bully. And we, we were doing so much other stuff in the community. We just transformed uh, our whole umbrella of things to into Grady Gives, which is what we do now. And um, whether that's, um, and Grady Gives got his hand in a little bit of everything, you know, mm-hmm. um, anything you think about um, from holidays, you know. Um, mm-hmm. um, like I say, awareness, empowering the youth, hospital mm-hmm. visits. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, so um, mm-hmm. yeah, go go ahead, man. Yeah, um, just like Jared was saying, um, at Grady Gibbs is certainly the umbrella of of what he does, and 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 I, I think the 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 big thing here, Kelsey, is that he really does so much that um, you know the Falcons has no clue, and because he doesn't do it to be recognized. Yeah. Um, um, like I said, the the, uh, li- the literacy awareness um, focus that he has, uh, he he's been given the key to our city. He's been given a Grady Jarrett Day in our city mm-hmm. of Conyers, That's February tenth. We celebrate that. Um, they retired his his high school uh, football jersey. Right now, this spring, we will break ground on the new team center. And it's called the Grady Jarrett Team Center. Uh, we're really, really excited about that right now. Also, um, the um, Senate has a bill that's uh, where they're going to name all of the, um, you know, the post that identifies the county. They're getting ready to put Grady, you know, home of Grady Jarrett on those posts. Uh, so it's 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 a it's a big thing, and and we certainly um, appreciate people that do recognize, but the reality is, you know, the things that he does when he goes to the hospitals, he goes to the hospitals to put a smile on someone's face, you know, and, and he's so good at it. You know, he's, he's, I call him gentle giant um, <laughs> because the, the, the kids and the, even, even older people that's in the hospital, they just love when he comes by and it just brightens their day. Um, he goes back, he's, he's keynote uh, called to be keynote speaker several times for, you know, his high school, the, the black history programs for, uh, even the state legislators have, have called them, you know, and, and so he, he does a lot. And, and the, the good thing is that, um, he enjoys doing it. There's still a lot of work to do. Um, uh, goodness, a whole bunch of stuff is coming to my mind right now. We, I think he gave seven different families, um, he bought the Christmas for all their kids. I mean, just, it just, it's just endless. And again, it's just to make somebody's, you know, smile 
throat if it's just a little short, you know, period of time. Yeah, Grady and I uh, talked a lot about just the, the the position that he's in, in, in the fact that he can impact people's lives, um, and he takes that responsibility very seriously. So you For can sure. tell with all of what you guys do. But you also not just what he does in the community, but man, you're a pretty big Clemson fan. We saw oh, that sure. you we saw that you were at the spring game with him, and For sure. uh, you guys are on vacations. We see on Grady's Instagram, we see you're around with him. So it seems like you guys do a lot together. Um, you were at Hayden Hurst uh, charity event right behind Grady in the pictures. I'm like, Alicia is everywhere where Grady is. And Absolutely. I think it's so cool. I, listen, I, I, outside of the support of him, um, um, and he'll tell you, you know, co- community things I've done all of, yeah, all of my children's yeah, lives. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and it, it's something that we enjoy doing, but let's talk about Clemson for a minute. Hey, that's, that's, that's my stumping ground. Listen, <laughs> he, he's representing today. Um, but we, some of our best years were spent at Clemson and we have developed lifelong friendships um with people at Clemson uh the president Jim Clements is a very good friend of ours and of course um coach Dabo Sweeney and Kathleen and the a lot of the coaches and I mean Jared still has you know some of the the people that um that um you know was in the cafeteria that are really really good friends Clemson is home Clemson will always be home for us and so we we certainly we certainly enjoy Clemson uh, but we have a tight knit family. We love to cook. Look, now that he cooks, I certainly have turned over the reins for him to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a very good cook. You know, uh, we don't miss our family vacation. Sometimes uh, here recently, when you know things got a little bit open, uh, he and his siblings have taken several vacations. But we don't miss our family vacations. We enjoy you know, just spend a time together. And then he and I will, we will still a day or two away and, you know, just kind of catch up on life and things like that. And those are priceless moments for me, Kelsey. Those are are things that I, I not only want my family can continue to do, but I want my children's families to do some of those same rituals. So yeah, it's good. Yeah. Um, back on, you know, the Clemson topic, um, Definitely staying close to the university has been been good. Even if it's even if I make it up, you know, just one one time a year, it's all so appreciated because you know I know when guys get away from school, they can stay away for so long, and um, it's it's good just to go show your face, show love, and it's been we've been fortunate because Coach Sweeney and the whole coaching staff, um, for the most part, is still intact from when I was there, so it feels good. And um, but and also with it just being you know two hours up the road from Atlanta, <laughs> that was always good and. Um, I started like I got when I went up there. I started because uh, I'm I don't know if people know, but I'm into like like water sports and stuff. You know, boating, um, jet ski, and stuff like that. So they had, like, got a not a, a lot of nice lakes up there. So mm-hmm. we'll go we'll go up there sometime with the fam and uh, just hang out. So um, so yeah yeah definitely definitely um, spending the time has been has been great great family place too. So uh, yeah, and this is a college town. Everything is about it. You know what I'm saying? Like everything in Clemson is about Clemson. You know. What I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know, uh, yeah, I don't you're know you're doing. I don't know how it was at uh, what was Cincinnati. Yeah, no, the, <laughs> there's not there's it's not warm it's not warm enough to do all of that. Um, but Grady, before before we let your mom go, I want to put you on the spot, and then Alicia, I have a question for you. Grady, what do you appreciate most about your mom? And Alicia, what do you hope when people say? I met Grady Jarrett or say the name Grady Jarrett, they say about your son. So Grady, you want to go first? Yeah, I'll go first. Um, what I appreciate most about um, my mom is. <laughs> <laughs> Perkin her ear up. Yep. She better stop I make a cry on this thing. No, just <laughs> no, what I appreciate most is um, it's just really her commitment, her commitment to, um, to to our family, to me, to my sisters, to um, getting the getting the job done, whatever the job may be. Um, commitment to being the best that she can be at all times, and even even um, the commitment to keeping us at our best the whole time. It's just and it's just like a it's a it's a um, 
unapologetic, unapologetic, unwavering love, support, and um, expectation for you to be the best at your in your in you know um, the best you can be. You know, it's not about the next person. It's never, it's not about doing this, out doing this, or whatever it may be. Um, you being the best you can be, and um, and then also just you know always remember and stand close to your roots, and um, but. The commitment and then the support that she gave gives to me is just um it's super special and i i know for a fact that you know it's not regular and um and she always tell me all the time like you know you're not regular you know and and, and um and that's not to be um cocky or arrogant but it's just to believe in the that the truth and knowing that you're different and um and accepting not not even accepting that thriving in that you know being proud in that and um and just really never let me sell myself short and believing in me when like nobody else did, you know? So, um, so yeah, that's definitely like, um, something that I always hung my hat on and motivated me because, you know, we always can, no matter, you know, how much time we go without seeing each other, which at, at, at the most of you are probably not seeing each other maybe a week. Cause one of us <laughs> on vacation. Um, but, um, you know, when we always come back and come to and just reflect on, you know, how far, you know, it, we we came and and just how far we have to 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 go as well and that's just not um in in football or sports or financially whatever it may be but just as on a journey just enjoying the journey you know what i'm saying I, and i and i try to always bring my family back to um just just remember that we we are blessed and we got and it's a journey that we on and um it's going to be ups it's going to be downs but at the end of the day we always got each other and um, that's something that my mom instilled in us at, a, at, at, you know, at a young age. And um, she just never relents from that. And um, she, and like I said, like she said, she a mama bear. And um, she, she, she always, you know, want to look out for the best interest for all, all her kids. So, and um, so, um, yeah, it's just, I mean, I could go all day to be honest. So. Um, I love that. Oh, thank you, Ma. What do you hope when people say they met your son or they say the name Grady Jarrett? How do you hope that people define your son? So uh, one word that I've, I've always used um, when I am talking to my son or about my son is undeniable. Mm -hmm. I, I told him early, early in his, in his life to become undeniable and be so undeniable that people don't have a choice but to put you in the spot where you want to be. Right. And I think that he's done a great job and is continuing to to become uh, the full definition of undeniable. Uh, I think when people hear the name Grady Jarrett, um, they hear a person of strong commitment, uh, high character, uh, integrity, a person that that. Um, is a leader both on the field and off the field, a leader um, at home. You know, he's the son, but he's certainly the anchor of my life, right? Um, I think that um, people hear the name Grady Jarrett and hear that this is a person that has a balance uh, and understand that you know, you just don't get things by things being given to you, that you have to work very, very hard for them, that you have to be persistent, you have to be dedicated uh, and determined, um, and you have to be, you know, faithful um, in, in, you know, your drive. Um, Jared is, I mean, he's, he's a person that looks at the glass half um, full instead of half empty. Uh, and that is going to take him a, a very, very long way. Um, I am crazy proud of this, you know, person and, and, um, you know, that's, that's my guy. Well, Alicia, thanks so much for joining Grady and I, and we both would like to wish you a happy mother's day because we oh, know yay. that's coming up. So Grady, you want to say happy Mother's Day before we head out? Yep, yep, yep. It's always a Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Ma. Go, um, before we end, Ma, you want to um, tell tell people about some of the stuff you got going on coming up a little bit to keep an eye out 
I hold on for um, what you've been working on? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So um, I too have a, a uh, show that we're working on. It's called uh, Inside the Shield with NFL Moms. Uh, host Alicia Jarrett and I too have a co-host in Rob Vaca. And uh, we have started some of our teasers. You'll be able to see a lot of our teasers actually running through um, draft weekend. And so I'm really, really excited about that. And basically what the show is about, it's a, it's a platform for um, not only NFL moms, but high school moms, collegiate moms to come on and basically kind of tell the stories about, you know, their sons, share their experiences and things like that. Um, from this um, concept, I'm actually also writing a book and it's going to be uh, a guide to parents. Uh, basically, I'm still trying to work on the name of it. We have a lot of, the, <laughs> believe it or not, we have a lot of the chapters of the book done, but we're still trying, I keep tweaking the name because I, I, I want the book to say, uh, you will not destroy what I built, right? And that's for this sports agents, for the financial advisors, <laughs> for, you know, whatever. So, but it's a, it's a parent's guide to how to, you know, do do this uh, do this journey, if you will. Uh, but yeah, so thanks for letting me share that. Appreciate that. That's awesome. I can't wait to see. Alicia, hopefully we are able to see you soon at practice and games. Um, hopefully things be a little bit normal, but appreciate you coming on to Getting Real with Grady Jarrett. Well, Grady, aren't moms just the best? Yeah, well, especially when you got one like mine. Yeah, <laughs> she's she's pretty awesome. So, I gosh, there's so many good stories she shared about you. But like I said in the conversation with her, you don't know you without knowing your mom. Yeah, and okay. for you, you got drafted by your hometown team. Mm -hmm. And obviously that's cool for a number of reasons, right? Because mm -hmm. you're going to play for the team you grew up watching. But mm -hmm. the element of the fact that your family was going to be able to be around and be able to be at things that, you know, had you been drafted by another team, she mm -hmm. probably wouldn't be able to. I'm sure she, she wouldn't miss a game, but just, you know, being able to Sundays after the game, go over to her yeah. house or have her over at the house. How, how cool was that for you to be able to have that? that factor when you realized okay i'm going to be playing for the falcons yeah you know it's very cool it's very cool it's a blessing and um but you know playing so close to home um you know you got to know how to handle it and you got to be the right type of person you know but for me is it was a, definitely a blessing and um actually in the time when i got drafted if you do know my draft story my um we our house burned uh caught fire for me in that moment it was a uh, the only moment in life where um we didn't um, really know the next move because mm -hmm. you know you did like you, you don't know how how, how what's gonna shake out. You know, my family has never been this place. We always been um, the steady, consistent family where you know people come in and take you know we take care of them, and it's just been being out of that position. And and then for me to be able to get drafted to, to the Falcons, it was cool because it, it allowed me to stay close to my family. Mm -hmm um during uh, such a hard time and such a, a time of indecision but um uh, so playing playing at home has been a it's been a blessing like like you said um whether it's um just the simple thing of after a game going out to the house I grew up in you know to go have go have dinner with the fam spend spend time and um being able to um you know you know my mom whether I was here or in um Playing for the the Hawaii, whoever if Hawaii had a team, I'm on. Oh, uh, do, do you know something? Is Hawaii getting an NFL <laughs> no, team? <laughs> no, I wish the Pro Bowl would go back there. Though. That was pretty fun. <laughs> but uh, I'll say that to say, but you know, it's it's been a blessing to be able to have her at the game. And uh, you know, you see, before the game, we always do a fist bump. You know, that means that mean that's just you know, just our little our little thing we do. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, not to go all day, but I mean, it's it's been a blessing. It's been a blessing being able to. Um, to be home and um, stay so close to the community and uh, it helps um, because, you know, along with, um, you know, in this life, being a professional football player and um, when you got a lot going on, whether it's in the community and, you know, a lot of things are expected of you, you know, you got agents, financial people, um, you know, 
playing and whatever has to have that buffer for somebody for my mom who's so involved she helps me with that she's like like she really like another like another like agent or something to me like almost because um she just helped be that buffer for me and um i need that for that that whether it's mental um mm -hmm. you know protection sometimes sometimes I do, we do, and she ain't gonna like this. Sometimes I do have to be like, all right, man, I can, I can do this. Like, I got, I got this, I got this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, 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 but I'm much rather, oh, it's like, it's like um, a coach, right? Mm -hmm. He's saying like, I'd rather tell you to slow down than speed up. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. um, so I, I always know the effort and the commitment is always gonna be there. So, I mean, it's So, just, I don't know if you know this story, but your mom reached out to me before mm -hmm. your first home game this season. Mm -hmm. And she called me to tell me what she was going to do with the rest of your family. So for those who didn't see the story out on atlantafalcons.com or see the, see the pictures on our social media channels, mm -hmm. Alicia has never missed one of Grady's games. And when COVID happened and the NFL decided they were still going to have a season, the first couple of games, there were no fans allowed. That meant no families were allowed, just the teams. Well, your mom didn't know what to do because mm. she's never not been at one of your games. Oh yeah, that was but awful. She, but she was determined to make sure that she still got to have that eye contact with you and saw you before your game. She was determined to do it. Yep. So she rounded up all of your family and mm. they surprised Grady where the players park at the same spot every, every game. And she knew where you parked. So mm. Alicia and the rest of your family made signs with your numbers yep. sayings. I mean, it was probably like 15 to 20 people that showed up on a bridge that overlooked where <laughs> Grady parked. Yep all in 97 jerseys so that when Grady came from the hotel to his parking spot, when he got out of his car and looked up to go into the stadium, he got to see his mom and the rest of his family wearing jerseys. And I just remember seeing those pictures and I got the mm -hmm. chills and I'm like, that is, that is so cool. And I don't know if you, you knew that your mom, no, but yeah, your mom called to let, to <laughs> let me know so that we could notify people to be able to take pictures of that. Yeah. So you guys had that moment yeah, forever. That's, awesome. that's, that's how, awesome. that's how much she thought that through when you mm -hmm. got out of the car, how shocked were you? Man, I was, I was super shocked. I I didn't even realize like, cause I'm just pulling in, mm -hmm. I'm backing into my spot. I don't even know if I, if I pulled in the parking lot and just like look forward and went in, if I haven't heard don't call me, I wouldn't even know, but I got, I backed in the spot and looked up. I'm like, what the world? I'm like, oh my god! Like this. So cool. It, it, it was. I was like, what in the world? But it was. It was fun. I kind of looking back on it. I'm, I was kind of thinking like something might be up because, like, um, you know, whether is whether is was you know my sister, like my mom, my girl, like texting me, like I'm like, why are they trying to see like where I'm at, like that is whatever. But I'm like, all right, whatever. And then I answered my phone call. My, I usually talk. That that used to be my thing. I usually call my mom before the game, mm -hmm. and uh. So I'm like, all right, whatever. So they they tripping today, whatever. They, they must first game. They must be whipped out of shape. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but no, that was a definitely a special moment. Um, and you know, it got a little, it got not a little, a lot emotional for me. And um, but it's just, it's just, you know, just how how grateful I am for that. And uh, I was like, man, I gotta go. I gotta go after the game. Like I just gotta go crazy. So you know, I, mm -hmm. I so I played pretty good. I had like two sacks and um, some other stuff. We ended up losing the game, but I feel good yeah. about it and it, uh because i knew she'd be at home watching i'm like well you already you know i gotta gotta go so that that's hard that yeah. was a, that was a hard day for her that was yeah. a hard day, for her day. yeah that was it was it was really cool to watch that whole thing go down and i'm glad that your family has the pictures forever um because what a what a cool moment and that shows what your family is all about yeah, definitely appreciate you helping us with that yeah of course um <laughs> So I asked you and your mom this, but I want to go a little bit more in depth here. Mm -hmm. Your contract extension, you, mm -hmm. you talked a little bit about how things went down to the wire. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, the NFL players, the goal is to get to that second contract and not yeah. everybody, get, not everybody gets there and you know how hard it is. Yeah. You talked a little bit about how you're just tired. So you didn't really do a celebrate, but mm -hmm. What was your first purchase after you signed that contract extension? You know, 
Man, I can't really, I don't even know my first, first one, but I'll tell you, I got some stuff. I definitely okay. did. Um, I bought, um, I bought a new car. I actually bought two new cars, to be honest. Um, I bought a, cause I, I bought a, a G wagon and then a car I always wanted when I was, um, just, you know, as a kid, um, you just grew up, I wanted a, a Rolls Royce. So I got a Wraith and, um, and that was like with the, the black, the black on black black badge with the um red seats uh starlight i got that and then um i i i was living in a house out in um out in sugarloaf mm -hmm. i was actually still i actually still ha still own this place but I, I don't stay there as my main residence in my um i rent it out now but um but i i was staying there but when i got the condo i'm like i want to move back to buckhead so i bought me a condo down there in Buckhead and stayed there and then um then I just I just resold that and I got a, a, a place another place now but um uh and then far as far as like then I'm I'm able to buy well I might do this before before my contract I bought my mom a car for Mother's Day hmm. um when you this, this might be my fourth year in the league so come so I had a little little bit of some um not what I got now, but I love it some, but I knew I had a little something coming in too. So bought about her that car for Mother's Day. And um um uh, trying to see. Let me see what like I'm like like I'm you know, I'm a Mercedes ambassador. So um all my all my family got like Mercedes, like um my little sister, my big sister. I got two of them. My mom got one, she won another one. I'm about to trade it in though. I'm not about to just keep <laughs> but uh but yeah so um that was that's a little that's a little some little, little some some i like always that. i always love to ask that question because you know some sometimes the answers reveal really great stories like you know you saying you buy your car you buy mm -hmm. your mom a car for mother's day um you know yeah. whether some i love i can't get enough of the stories of when people that get drafted or reach your second contract, mm -hmm. they buy their mom a house. Like, mm -hmm. I just think those stories are so heartwarming and just, yeah. I, I can't get enough of those. So that, that's why I wanted to ask you that. Yeah. But going back to that, that process for you, were you, you said you were a little bit nervous. Walk us through a little bit of what that process was like and just, how excited you were when it was done that you were signed by the team that you dra were drafted by that you didn't have to go anywhere and oh by the way you were mm -hmm. paid at the top of your position yeah yeah so um yeah I was definitely could share a little bit of that story so um it was the last day for franchise tag mm -hmm. players to be to sign a deal mm -hmm. and um well, I was at the I was at my agency office and um, me, uh, my agents that I had, that I have, and there's a couple of them, and then, um, and then my mom was there, and there were we we had a number in mind for what we wanted to do um, or, or agree to, and if I, and I was so confident in myself that I was willing to turn down a lot of money to play on a one year deal, huh? um, and. Cause I, 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 I knew that my best football was ahead of me and I, and I, and, you know, and we were just really, um, we really believe in ourselves, you know, and then mm -hmm. I, I see ourselves as me, my, my whole team, agents, financial people. And, you know, I was so willing to bet on myself that, you know, we had, um, they, they gave a final, you know, um, uh, offer on what they wanted to do. And, um, you know, I, I wasn't, and I wasn't sold on it. And, um, and uh, I said, I, I play on the franchise tag. Like, I'm, I'm not, like, like I say, like, I, 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 it is what it is. And, you know, I, you know, that, you know, whatever, some more time passed. But at the end of the day, you know, it's almost getting reported, like, still no deal for Grady Jerry on the day. So it looked like he might just be under the tag, blah, 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 blah. And um, it, we went down to, they had to sprint to, after um, the Falcons and us came to agreement, um, we literally had the um, the girl in the office literally had to go sprint to the fax machine room to <laughs> fax the the um, paperwork uh, over to the to the NFL offices because if you don't get in about four o'clock then it's, it's void you know mm -hmm. and um, so so I was just really 
it was really like in a um like an in, intense moment like it was just it was just really like putting faith in like you know if you you know you you put your mind set your mind to something and what you want and uh it was just really a um a sweet deal for both sides and 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 um uh, that i mean it was just something that you just couldn't you know turn down especially at that mm-hmm. at that moment in time you know um i was you know fifty thousand dollars off from being a second pay high def- de- defense tackle in 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 the whole league you know and mm-hmm. um uh and then so you know and then also that just set us up for you know future stuff going forward and um it, it couldn't work out any couldn't work out any better with a better place better organization better team owner and um I, I was uh sincerely like blessed like any any time I spoke but and this is not me just you know um blowing horn whatever just blowing smoke blowing smoke is like it's really been been um great here like I, I'm thankful for it like um because you know you hear so much horror stories about other other other, other places and stuff so I definitely don't take it lightly and um you know, I have, you know, seen teammates come and go and I look around, see the pictures. Now, you know, I'll, I'll be the only one left in some of the pictures and I'll just be like, you know, that's how, you know, quick this turnaround is in, in the NFL, you know? So I, I, every day is a blessing, you know? And um, uh, I wouldn't want to do it anywhere else um, as, of, you know, as of right now. So, I mean, it's, it's, so, it's, it's, it's fun and um, yeah. Well, we know that your mom was probably the happiest of all. So just like your mom said, you know, she's proud of the hardworking, compassionate person that you are. So we just wanted to wish everyone that's listening, that's a mom, happy Mother's Day, Grady. I don't know if you want to give a shout out, but Mm -hmm. happy Mother's Day to all listening. And we appreciate you tuning in to another episode of Getting Real with Grady Jarrett. Yep. Yeah. Happy Mother's Day to all. Um, Much love and uh, excitement for you all.